Hey, what's up guys? What you're looking at right here is an oxyhydrogen torch ablation test. We're going to be talking about the refractory glue that I made in the last couple of videos. This is some pretty powerful stuff. Let's take a look. This is all pieces of the high temp glue being hit with uh, 2100 watts of power. That's how much power is going into this flame. Pretty strong stuff. Here for contrast, we'll melt some brick there. Melt that brick like it ain't nothing. Hear that? We're getting like a noise. So it melts that brick like it ain't no thing. I don't know if you can see that, but it's turned to glass there. But uh, stuff here. does not seem to melt it. These pieces here set up. Let's see how long a piece of eighth inch stainless steel holds up. This flame is just getting freaking huge. Uh, my pressure's stabilizing, so we're okay. It's about a nine inch flame. One, two, three. If it likes that better. What the hell is going on? Hear that? Am I electrically connected? I might be grounded or something. I don't know what's going on with this noise. Sorry, I lost track of what we were doing there. Never heard this torch make that noise before. That's stainless steel. It's holding up to it. I mean, the metal underneath is red hot as a result. Whereas over here, the metal just gets all damaged. Getting burned up. You see there, we got some damage to that fire brick. All right, fellas. So. <laughs> This is some crazy stuff, man. Listen to this. Mm. 
You hear that? It is so hard. Look at that. It sounds like a freaking piece of metal. It is so hard. It's got some serious cracks in it too, and it's like just holding up. So we need to put some temper in this composition, of course, but even without the temper, it has made a material that is so strong. Finally broke it. And that was probably this one from one of the cracks. I feel like glass is about this strong. Like, cause I've broken Christmas ornaments before as a child, so got a pretty good idea. That is hard. What's up fellas? Doing some preliminary testing here on a new composition. And I also wanted to bring to the table some of the other tests that we were doing with the new refractory glue. These are the bricks that you guys saw me break with my hands and I glued them back together. This one here was in three pieces. This has been fired to about 500 degrees. We got some significant crazing there though. But even with the crazing, the stuff is so strong, you have to break the brick to take it apart. I've had to take a step back from the high emissivity coating project because it's an expensive project and we all know what's going on with that right now. So we've seen this brick a while back. A lot of people have showed interest in this glue. Some people have contacted me by email with some pretty serious projects going on where they really need something that's cheap and very effective. And we saw how this glue, even though it has some crazing issues with no temper added to it, it was still stronger than the substrate that you're bonding together. Anytime you would stress test it, the substrate would break and not the glue bond. So we also seen this brick here be busted apart. I glued it back together and I put it right back in the fire. Sorry, I've got a pot of water glass boiling behind me. Um, so I'm going to try and bust this by hand and just kind of see what happens here. I hope I don't splash nothing in that pot. So here goes. I can't break it like I did last time. I'll try and find that footage of me breaking it last time. Here goes. It's not busted. I'm going to try it this way now. I'm probably going to get hurt. And go. A little bit of a mixed bag there. Ironically, you know, nice enough, the brick itself, this was a two piece. This thing here is still kind of hot. Freaking boiling stew behind me here. I'll show you in a second. So this thing was a three piece deal. We glued it back together with a very high temperature refractory glue. It was only a, it, it was only a, um, a bi-compositional recipe. It does not have a whole lot to it, but we are adding some temper from this point on. So here goes. Man, I'm looking kind of weak. I better go eat. Oh. I did bust the brick. It's again, it's busted brick and not the glue joint. I see a little bit of an area there of the glue joint. Just a dab. We'll take a closer look at this up close. There's a third piece on here. Ow, just took a shiver to the liver there. I cannot bust that third piece. This is indeed some pretty strong glue kind of busted their semi-grain. That was a pretty hard blow. Um, that might have dazed you. Okay, you can see where the glue is there. So the glue bond gave up right there and right there, but the rest of it's brick stuck on brick. 
Same thing with this here. The actual joint didn't break, the brick broke again. There's one spot where it gave way. But the rest of that is busted brick. A new crack formed rather than the glue joint breaking. There is that piece there. You can see where the glue let go right on the outer edge there. So this time, this was a much drier batch. I wanna add that though. I went with a really dry batch on this, thinking it would make it tougher, but it did not bond as well as a result. But even still, you can see here where it broke in this direction, that only minimal areas of the bond gave way. Anywhere you see the glue bond, or the glue joint, that's where it gave up. Anywhere you still see brick, that's where the brick failed rather than the glue bond. Like that, for example. So this is the second time we glued this brick back together and broke it in half. This one I only did once, but it did really well. You can see there, there's no glue showing on the crack interface. There's a little bit on this one right there and there. This is a wafer that I made. Very hard to bust this stuff. I want to say that it's harder than glass. I, I haven't done any conclusive testing. This has only been fired to red hot temps. And that's all I could bust was that little sliver off of there. And my hands are too weak to break that. Man, that really hurt doing that. Super tough stuff. This is the white sand aggregate. This one right here is the black blast media. Very tough stuff. Ah, I cannot break that. Let me see if I... Uh, can push it like that. <laughs> no way, man. That is some really tough stuff. I tell you that. All right, so that's what I had going on behind me. Whoa, man. I'm making up another batch of this right here. Some of the potassium silicate water glass that has a supposedly some superior properties to the sodium silicate water glass. So we'll take a look at this here in a second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this combustion chamber that we saw perform phenomenal. It's made out of refractory. It's all busted apart now, but we're gonna glue it back together. And then we're gonna run this burner um, in an upcoming video but I will show up getting glued all back together. We'll take a look at it. And um, I also showed you guys this piece here of this self-healing material that I made. Here it is after about five days. And over time, it does turn back into this. This uh, Super Bowl type rubbery material that can withstand extreme torture. We'll do a video on this polymer. This is a water glass polymer that I haven't had time to really share with you guys. And it's made by reacting um, water glass with alcohol. If you dump this stuff in pure alcohol, it makes this slimy, crazy material that's similar to Super Bowl material. And then we got this piece here which was busted into a hundred pieces, which is glued back together. It's been sitting on a rusty hot plate. This is the hottest part. No visible cracks without magnification. I'm gonna be firing this thing up also. I'm gonna give it a little shave. Yeah, this thing's been glued back together with that glue. 
and it's um, about to be solid as a rock. So we'll come back to this. We've got some adjustments to make, but thus far, the progress is worth sharing. We've already got a usable product.